The easiest way to explain this without sounding like a lunatic is to start from the beginning. Every Saturday and Sunday morning, I make it a point to check out a few garage sales. I'm never looking for anything in particular, just hoping to stumble upon something cool. And well, a few months ago, I thought I did just that. It turns out it could be the worst mistake I've ever made. Rummaging through a box, I saw a long skinny box decorated with hand-printed stars and planets and text in a different language. I couldn't recognize it. It seemed to be of East Asian origin, but I can't be sure. No way, I thought to myself. A stargazing telescope. I had always wanted one of these things, but the new ones always seem so expensive, and the ones you see at garage sales and thrift stores are usually pieces of junk. After opening the box and checking it out, it was clear this was no amateur telescope. Covered with all kinds of knobs and buttons, it seemed like a genuine high-powered telescope. I made my way to the owner of the house, trying not to get my hopes up too much. The garage sale owner was an interesting fellow. I'm not from the part of town I was in at the time, so I didn't recognize him. He wore sandals, shorts, and a bright Hawaiian shirt a size too big for him. His skin was tanned a dark brown, and his gray hair seemed bleached a little lighter from exposure to the sun. His eyes were a little spooky, like there was a screw or two loose. He was in the middle of making a joke with a customer and laughing a little too loudly to be socially acceptable when he spotted me. The smile on his face disappeared when he saw what I was holding. It wasn't a particularly dramatic reaction, just a subtle seriousness that I noted. Is this thing for sale? I asked, half expecting him to snatch it out of my hand saying something like, How did this get out here? Of course it's for sale. I'm trying to get rid of everything. I'm moving out next week. He responded with a little less gusto than what I had overheard from his early exchanges. He looked me up and down and I couldn't help but get the feeling that he was sizing me up. Well, how much does it cost? Are you asking what it costs or what the price is? Life has two different answers to those questions sometimes. He said in a curiously detached way. Confused, I clarified that I just wanted to know how much money I would have to pay for this thing. He said 20 bucks and I happily slapped a $20 bill in his hand and I made my way home, satisfied with my purchase. I set the telescope up on my balcony on my second floor apartment. I chose this apartment when I moved to this town years ago, specifically for this balcony. The apartment itself is on a hill overlooking a large valley and the view from the balcony is absolutely breathtaking. I can see across the whole valley and the sunsets make the price of the place worth it. The telescope would make the perfect addition to my sanctuary out on the deck. After setting it up, I immediately took the box it came in out to the trash. I'm not sure if it was the foreign language or just the crudely drawn figures. It just creeped me out, so I tossed it in the recycling. For the rest of the day, I just counted the hours until I could try out my new purchase. And finally night came in, I made my way over to the balcony to see how this thing worked. After a few minutes of playing with the knobs and buttons, I could focus it in on certain constellations and planets and I was really having a great time. By the time I bothered to check my watch, an hour had come and gone. Finally, I decided to head to bed. I put the lens cover on and I left it pointed at Jupiter which I had been trying to get a better view of. The next morning, as I was making myself breakfast and getting ready, the telescope caught my eye. It wasn't in the same position that I had left it in. Instead of pointing at the sky, it was pointing down into the valley. I wasn't too concerned at the time and I just went about my day. When I got back from my Sunday errands, I passed by the balcony and I looked at the telescope again. This time I noticed that the lens cap was not on the lens like I had left it the night before. I walked outside to check it out, and the cap was neatly placed on the railing of the balcony. I was confused, but I concluded that I just must have left it off by mistake. In retrospect, I must have known I didn't leave it off, but the brain has a funny way of tricking you into more comfortable thoughts. I waited patiently for night to come, and I continued my interplanetary journey I had started the night before. 
I took extra care to place the lens cap on snugly and moved the entire telescope off to the side out of the sun. The next morning, I let out a gasp when I looked out at the balcony window. The telescope had moved about five feet from where I had stored it to the edge of the balcony, pointing where it had been earlier. The lens cap neatly placed on the railing. For some reason, I was really shaken up about this. I was confused someone had broken in. However, all the doors and windows were locked and my second story balcony was too high for anybody to climb up to. There was just no explanation. It was extremely unsettling. I picked up the telescope and I brought it inside my house. I put it in a closet and I tried to put it out of my mind. I was able to almost forget about it until I returned from work that evening. I immediately got goosebumps when I entered the door. I quickly ran out to the balcony and there it was, set up perfectly. After staring at it incredulously, a sudden curiosity came over me. The telescope was pointed in what seemed like the same exact spot as earlier. I was drawn like a magnet to the eyepiece and I had to see what it was pointing at. When I looked through the glass, a house was in perfect focus. I recognized the house immediately. It was the house where I had bought the telescope from. This was the last straw for me. I picked up the telescope and I brought it to the street to toss it out. There was something very wrong with all of this and I just wanted to forget that I ever bought this stupid thing. I decided to try and go for a drive to clear my head. There was no point though. I couldn't stop thinking about that damn telescope. The confusion and frustration I felt made my head feel heavy. It was early enough though, so I decided to see if I could talk to the garage sale guy and see if he had any answers. While on my way, the same words kept repeating in my head. Are you asking what it costs or the price? I turned on the street and I felt my insides twist. The block was covered with police cars and fire trucks. I slowly passed by as the medical team was wheeling out a victim on a stretcher from the very same house I had been at a few days earlier. The only thing I could glimpse of the person in the stretcher was a flash of a Hawaiian shirt that had a little more bright red on it than I remember. At this point, I think I kind of shut down. My brain was overwhelmed and therefore decided that there was no possible way that any of this could be connected or even real. Maybe I was making it all up. Maybe I still am. I wasn't surprised when I came home to find the telescope set up in its usual spot, now pointing in a different direction. The cat perched almost mockingly on the balcony. For weeks I just ignored it. It was relatively easy at first, but with each time I passed the balcony, a small part inside of me was being pulled like a moth to a flame. Each day, the pull got stronger and stronger, and eventually, I couldn't resist any longer and I gazed into the eyepiece once again. This time I did not recognize the house that was in perfect focus. It came as a huge relief. It was like the feeling of a satisfaction you get after scratching an itch you've been trying to reach. I went about my day feeling like a huge weight had been taken off my shoulders. That is until I turned on the news. Good evening. This beautiful home in a seemingly calm neighborhood was the scene of an unimaginable violence this evening, the reporter said. I recognized the home because I had seen it a few hours earlier through the telescope. A triple murder. No suspect. No witnesses. I sprinted to the bathroom in just enough time to heave up the dinner I had made earlier. I felt disgusted. Lost. An overwhelming feeling of guilt had wrapped itself around me like a blanket that was slowly suffocating me. I tried to stir in the telescope, but I knew it would make no difference. It returned to its same position every time. I tried to simply ignore it again, but the call of the eyepiece amplified exponentially each time I passed by. I had to look eventually, and I did. I never watched the news and I barely went anywhere outside of work. I stopped speaking with friends and co-workers and even in my solitude, I could hear worried whispers of the mysterious deaths all over the valley. Some would say it was a serial killer, racking up a kill count with no pattern. I did my best to ignore it all, 
It was easy enough for my brain to pretend like there was no connection between these deaths and my actions, but deep down, I knew the truth and it was eating me alive. I went as long as I could without walking out onto that balcony that used to bring me so much peace and happiness, but no matter how much I tried, I couldn't resist. The reason I am writing this post is because the telescope has been doing something different. I'm sure I know what it means, but I can't come to terms with it. I woke up three days ago as I usually do, in a cold sweat, feeling as if I didn't sleep at all. I walked out of my room and cast a wondering gaze at the balcony, knowing the telescope would be pointing towards a new direction, a new victim. What I saw sent a panic down my spine and deep into the pit of my stomach. The telescope was pointing directly at me. I ran out of the house half-dressed with dread anchored to the very core of my being. I slept in my car that night. Well, I didn't sleep, but I did not return to my apartment. I drove and drove and drove as far as I could get away from that goddamn forsaken telescope, but every time my panic would begin to subside, I would recognize the welcome sign of my hometown passing by again and again. I was trapped in an endless circle. A war between my conscious mind and the undercurrent drive me back to where I was trying so hard to escape from. When it was too difficult to keep my eyes open, I would pull over and nod off for a few hours, only to find myself a few miles closer to the apartment when I'd wake up. It's been three days and I think I have to return to my apartment. I have to see what's in the eyepiece. That small piece of glass holds the answers I've been searching for. I can feel it now. This time it's different, but I feel it just the same. This is my purpose.